Dudes, what is happening? This is Trent. Um, I'm here with another demo, and in this one, I'm doing some portraiture. That's right. I'm drawing a, a person that I know, a very important person in my life, uh, which is a very dangerous, dangerous thing to do. And uh, uh, But it's also a great challenge. Uh, doing these kind of uh, little studies is a fantastic way to develop your skills and uh, also to uh, develop your understanding of the world around you and the and the way that you draw it, the way you interpret it. Uh, there's uh, a little bit of an extra challenge that comes with this uh, because you know if you don't get it right you might be ending up sleeping on the couch for a while and uh, so you want to make sure that you do a damn good job. <laughs> Um, and here I am playing it totally off the cuff. I'm toying around with brushes that I uh, never used before. I think I found these on a forum. Uh, it was a little bit of a watercolor brush. Um, I'm getting really kind of messy. And the most important thing when you're just kind of sketching in a, a person's face is uh, uh, really just kind of getting the distance between uh, features uh, somewhat accurate. You know, uh, I'm not worried about details. I don't zoom in yet. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I want to kind of just capture the the essence of that person's identity and try not to. Basically, I'm trying to ignore my subconscious mind that is um, that is you know recognizing this person for all of the other information that I have about her personality. And I'm trying to just really kind of as a study really analyze like oh wow like why do her lips do this kind of a thing here and then like oh I see like you know because she's kind of leaning on her hand you know her her cheek is a little bit more emphasized or or how is the light hitting this certain edge that kind of makes it feel rounded and turning uh, another thing you're gonna see me do a lot with here is uh, beyond just working with brushes that I don't normally work with I'm trying to keep uh, large brushes going uh, I'm working in large sweeping brush strokes and then I'm kind of grabbing some elements and I'm using the liquify tool which is um, if you go into filters uh, and then you scroll down to liquify it takes a copy of everything and then smushes it onto a, uh, a mesh of sorts that allows you to kind of twist and distort. Uh, I'm playing around with different hairstyles here. She was sitting on the couch behind me while I was doing this. I just thought it'd be kind of fun to tease her a bit and see what she'd look like with a different hairstyle. <laughs> um, you know, and so you know, as I'm as I begin to develop it a little bit further, I'm just kind of easing into implied details. There's a such thing as the economy of line. I don't normally work in this kind of style of work, um, you know, and so it's a bit of a challenge for me. This is what you're looking at right now is the liquify tool. Fantastic for adjusting, okay, flow of hair or like, oh, maybe this bulges out too far or maybe like her eyes need to be just a slightly a little bit uh, further apart or closer together. Maybe that eyebrow needs to be a little bit lower. Little details like that are great, handled great in the, uh, the um, liquify tool. Uh, I finally zoomed in here and I started dealing with some of the details. You'll notice that I'm mostly only going to deal with details in and around the eyes. Um, specifically, you know, if you're doing a larger painting, you want to probably just focus on the part that uh, the viewer is going to notice the most. And uh, generally speaking, that's always going to be the eyes or the face of a character, since this entire drawing is of a face. Um, you know, then most likely the viewer's eyes are going to go directly to the eyes of the character. And since she's looking directly at the camera, uh, you know, it's 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 very kind of like an engaging piece. Um, and so this was actually taken from a photograph, uh, and uh, I am uh, doing this as a study. This was not drawn, uh, you know, in in real time from a live model. Um, and you know this is kind of just a handy little uh, technique if you really want to develop your skill set with uh, with painting uh, digital painting this is a great way to do it uh, some people would say hey why not just take a, a damn photograph and I can't argue with that but what I can argue with in, in that regard is that you know if you want to improve your illustration skills these are great studies draw from photographs draw from life better if they're in color, um, but uh, I don't consider myself that skilled, as skilled enough to be handling that just yet. I wanted to do something that I knew I could handle confidently and comfortably. You'll notice that I did add some color stuff in later. Uh, I'm using a Photoshop blender here um, and uh, still doing a little bit with the liquify tool. You can change the brush size with that, by the way, and I know this, uh, this video is suddenly turning into almost an endorsement for liquify. 
Uh, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm also keeping some uh, some graininess in the in the brushes here, and uh, you know, darkening in some areas, lightening some areas out. As I said, this is not a style that I usually work in. I tend to work mostly in line art, um, but I've always loved line art. And and as far as uh, painting goes, I don't know that I ever really want to just be like a, a, a photorealistic painter. That's not really my 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 style. I'm toying around with some different brushes. I think that was a Sparth brush. And I'm keeping it really grainy and kind of noisy, and uh, that's just my style, my preference. I, I really like uh, paper grain. I really like a, a feeling of uh, like an oil paint or a uh, chalk kind of a drawing. Um, I don't know. It's just a personal preference. Uh, I don't tend to want to replicate perfect photorealism, uh, although you know I, I do want to advance my knowledge and understanding of how some of those things work. Um, I wouldn't say that's my strength. You know, I rely pretty heavily on uh, cheap tricks, and uh, I'm going to encourage that in others. So uh, because it's gotten me this far, and uh, I'm I'm not unhappy with with the results I've gotten that way. <laughs> Fake it till you make it. That's what I always say. Um, anyway, so here I switched over to Painter. There's some really fantastic blending brushes. I uh, was trying some different techniques. I had just come back from the massive black workshop in Los Angeles where I did a little demonstration, but I also had a chance to uh, watch some other uh, very talented artists at work and pick up some illustration techniques. Uh, uh, so I even dug into some, uh, some chalk brushes here. And uh, chalk brushes and paper textures work very differently in Corel Painter than they do in Photoshop. Um, and actually, I don't know that, well, there's a, there are some similar uh, are ways that you can kind of capture some similar uh, effects. Uh, but uh, for the most part, I really love the way that Painter handles papers. It's really awesome. But you know, you got to have a lot of patience for understanding it, learning it, and developing it. Um, I was trying some stuff here where it almost looks like her, her, her face has like a, like some kind of a porcelain uh, kind of a, a thing to it. Uh, I wasn't really digging that and I think ultimately in the end I went with something else but there was some neat uh, kind of a blue and, and or cools and warms happening here um, and you know maybe that would have been a good direction to take this. Um, really you're kind of watching me fumble around here. I was kind of getting nervous that I'd end up on the couch uh, so I think later I went back to something that I knew would work really well, which is a little bit more of the um, kind of a paper textury kind of a thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, fun to explore regardless. And, uh, you know, one thing about these videos, I want to keep, uh, you know, all the all the mistakes in there, too. I want you to see, you know, all the things that I, that I flub and I mess up. And and uh, you'll see that, uh, you know, I, I truly am just kind of like feeling around. And, and I think that's good. I think it's, it's good to stay in that kind of a, a space where... Something may work and it changes the way you do things forever. Some things may not, and you never do that again. It's okay to make mistakes. In fact, it's fantastic. Your mistakes are m far more valuable than your successes. And there you have it, guys. Uh, that's uh, that's kind of how the final turned out. Uh, it's either going to go in, in a frame or in the trash. Uh, we're going to find out. Um, and uh, <laughs> if you like these kind of videos, please subscribe. And if you have some questions or comments or concerns, please leave them in the uh, comment section below. And I don't like how YouTube has the reply system because it just puts it in the stack. So I'm going to do a video that's going to answer your questions. And I will see you guys then. Adios, muchachos.